One way to describe what happens next on the Cedar Creek Fire is to look at the response to the Archie Creek Fire. It burned a similar amount of acreage on the Umpqua National Forest two years ago. Archie Creek Fire Bear Project. What is a bear? So bear is burned area emergency response. And it's a forest service program that once the fires are contained, we have a team of specialists that come in and, and look at the condition of the fire itself. How has that changed the landscape? What kind of emergencies might we face the next year or so from flooding or from invasive uh, weeds coming in? We visit the Wright Creek Crossing that leads to a trailhead on the very popular North Umpqua Trail. Here, at the advice of burned area emergency response team scientists, a culvert is being replaced with a bridge. The culvert that was in place uh, was undersized and was at risk of being blown out from a, a flood or a debris flow. What we did was we calculated uh, the percent increase of flow and determined that the current culvert was in need of being replaced. When the engineers looked at it, they determined that due to the size of the crossing here, that a bridge would be a better choice. So they opted for a bridge. The Archie Creek fire impacted the most popular recreation sites on the North Umpqua Ranger District, including trails, trailheads, campgrounds, and raft launch sites, many of which remain closed. How soon after a fire do you get in? Look at every inch or aerial? How do you do an assessment? Typically, as a fire gets close to 100% containment, the bear team comes in. They operate for seven to 10 days, do a very quick assessment. Uh, within you know two weeks, that assessment's done, and hopefully funding is starting to roll at that point. And then we scramble to get the projects implemented as fast as possible. The goal is to get them in place before a damaging storm event. Shortly after the Archie Creek fire, the Umpqua River was fouled with ash and sediment. Several downstream communities, including Glide and Roseburg, which pull their drinking water from the river, were forced to upgrade filtration systems. So here we are almost two years later from the start of the Archie Creek fire, and this has happened. It takes a little time, doesn't it? We were set back last year. We were set to do it. And then we had another round of large fires on the North Umpqua, over 100,000 acres burned including um, upriver from, from the Archie, which impacted this area because of fire closure. And so we couldn't get contractors in here to do the work. We had a window this year, and so we're getting it done. Volunteers from the National Forest Foundation, local partners and nonprofits are helping rebuild fire damaged trails. Joe Blanchard says those who volunteer see firsthand how big the fire was, how much damage was caused, and how long it takes to restore. I'm a trail runner and a rafter, and you know I, I hear it from the community that I, that I engage with. Folks are patient, they understand that this is a, a big fire and that it takes a while to recover from something like this. So Joe, um, you know, the forest is coming back already. Um, what do we got, maples coming Yeah, we got own? some big leaf maple. We also have some blackberry here that we're gonna have to treat. So it's a, <laughs> it's a mix. Right. But you know, in general, the, the recovery here has been pretty quick. It's been two years and you can see um, the re-sprouting and just the vegetation coming back. In places it's great. In other places, what we wanna do is reseed or replant because we've lost the seed source um, in some of these stand replacing fire areas. Bottom line, restoring a forest after a major fire is a complex, expensive, and time-consuming process. I'm Brooks Snavely for The Great Outdoors.